recent launch of the world's most powerful icebreaker was a proud moment for many Russians. Это очень большой и грандиозный праздник для России, потому что Россия всегда была главной морской державой, и для нас, в том числе, корабли для севера имеют огромное значение. As the polar ice melts, northern nations are rushing to exert their control. And with its new fleet of modern icebreakers, Russia is way out in front. This is a Ural. It's able to crunch through almost three meters of ice, and its nuclear-powered engines give it almost unlimited endurance. Russia has two other ships just like this one already, and six even larger icebreakers on the way. Конечно, важно, потому что сейчас все знают, да, что в Арктике очень большие запасы нефти, газа, и стратегически важно иметь такие суда для того, чтобы организовывать и добычу и вот проводку больших судов. There's no discussion here about a climate emergency. The talk is only about opportunity. Canada. Canada needs icebreakers to compete, taunted the Russian shipyard official. Our shipyard can build them for you, goes another. Russia's economy is almost entirely dependent on oil and gas, and with an estimated 22% of the world's undiscovered reserves in the Arctic, Russia is pushing to unlock all it can. At this year's Arctic Forum, President Vladimir Putin said the icebreaker fleet is key to getting resources to market year-round through the Northern Sea Passage over the top of Russia. Our goal is to increase the volume of cruise ships here, only from the Sea of Sea to 80 million tons already in 2025. the gigantic new industrial projects really drives home the scale of Russia's ambitions for the Arctic. This is the centerpiece, Yamal LNG. It's an enormous liquefied natural gas plant built on Siberia's frozen tundra at 70 degrees north. A few months back, our crew got a quick tour of the year-old facility. It has its own airport, seaport, and it's large enough to accommodate 30,000 fly-in workers. We also saw the Christophe de Marguerite. It's a new ice-capable tanker based here year-round thanks to the thinning Arctic ice. Thousands of kilometers to the west, Murmansk, already the world's largest Arctic community with a population of over 300,000, is also expanding. This vast site will be a new port with a rail link to the south. But all of these potentially lucrative Arctic opportunities also come with great challenges and great risks. Environmental journalist Anna Kiriva grew up here. I love Murmansk. And she worries about how these projects will affect the delicate northern ecosystem. I've seen how bad we can do. Uh, I, still, I haven't seen how we can improve it. Kiriva took us to the town of Nickel. It's the site of a metal smelter that's been belching away for 70 years. The slow-growing Arctic trees nearby are blackened and poisoned by sulfur dioxide emissions. The lifeless landscape may take decades to recover if it ever does. heals itself very slowly and only if you uh, decrease the amount of production. The emissions were so huge that it will take quite some time to re rehabilitate the territory. There is concern as well about the impact of all that new Arctic shipping. Some here even tout the Northern Sea as a possible rival for the Suez Canal as it cuts down the trip from Europe to Asia by 10 days. But barely anyone lives along the route and there are very few search and rescue stations in the Arctic in case of trouble. 
what if uh, if uh, there would be a disaster and someone some ship would sink and it would be somewhere in the um, i don't know siberian waters where will you bring the people along with the industrial buildup there's been a military one too Strategically, the attraction of Russia to the Arctic is evident. Japan lies to the east and NATO to the west, but up here, Russia is unchallenged. Russia has been refitting Soviet-era military bases to demonstrate its willingness to enforce its Arctic claims. Whether that's evidence of aggressive intentions or legitimate defensive posturing, Russia has been very open about what it's up to in the Arctic, nor has the Kremlin shied away from inviting international experts to scrutinize the projects. British ecologist Terry Vincent Callahan was on the same tour of Yamal and the nearby city of Salakard, and he came away conflicted. On one hand, we saw an exceptional development in the Arctic, which uh, is not easy to accomplish. It's a huge development. And that development does some good, but at the same time, I'm an ecologist, so an environmentalist, so I worry about um, losing tundra uh, for yet another big oil and gas development. He says industrial activity in the Arctic, especially emissions and particles from stacks, can dramatically increase the rate of global warming. That finds its way onto the Greenland ice sheet, onto the, uh, the, the pure ice and snow of the high Arctic islands. Um, so the snow starts melting faster. Over the generations, Russia's northern indigenous people have been hurt more than most from Arctic development. In Soviet times, many were forcibly removed from their communities to make room for military bases. Today, most have their livelihoods tied to reindeer or caribou herding. Nineteen-year-old Maxime Okoto told us they're learning to live with the disruption to migration routes and all of the new industry. But when we went to the home of the Sami people, about 200 kilometers from Romance, we heard a different story. Вы сейчас так сказали, это такое грандиозное, что ощущение такое, знаете, что мы совсем песчинка в этом мире, и что на самом деле никому не будет интересно, что будет с нами происходить. Valentina Sovkina is an activist here. The Sami number only around 1,700 people in Russia, but their communities have been here for thousands of years. Коренные народы, хранители Арктики, они ее сохранили в той первозданной, как говорится, чистоте и красоте. She told us their experience dealing with big corporations has not been good. Мы обращались в Норильский никель, и мы хотели вот именно вот эти провести согласования с представителями промышленности о том, чтобы выделять определенную процент от деятельности для того, чтобы мы могли помогать сохранять самскую идентичность, так называемую. С нами просто фактически не стали разговаривать. Were this Arctic landscape in Canada, there'd be perhaps years of assessments and then years of debate. But in Russia, the Putin government, faced with a sluggish economy and crippling foreign sanctions, has said everything. Shipping, LNG, resource development is now all full speed ahead. I think, unfortunately, uh, the world will need oil and gas for decades. So uh, all the countries who have uh, oil and uh, gas, they, are, they will develop it, even in the Arctic. And they will go further and further to the Arctic to, to continue developing it. There's still much that could go wrong with Russia's big Arctic bet. Energy prices could crash. Maybe alternative fuels will gain traction. But if not, Russia and its new fleet of icebreakers are in a commanding position to call the shots in the Arctic. Chris Brown, CBC News, in Murmansk.